Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to our ISK Facebook live chat. Uh, it's a streaming that we do every Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. And today we are going to be dealing with issues related to protecting community land rights. Uh, so you are able to you'll be able to to follow us on this stream and you'll also be able to engage us through our WhatsApp number which is 0724-929737. You can also email us on info at isk.or.ke and for any ISK member who will be engaging us be sure to be earning some CPD points out of this because it's a very important session for our institution. Uh, today, being 19th uh, June 2020, your host or your person engaging with you today is Priscilla Nyaga. Uh, maybe you're asking who is Priscilla? Priscilla is a retired lad guru. I was working with the Ministry of Lads for a long time and retired as a deputy director for Lad Adjudication and Settlement. I am a full ISK member and I train for ISK and also other institutions from time to time, especially on matters related to community lad rights. I was also engaged in the developing of the Act the Community Lad Act and the Community Lad uh, Regulations. I was also active uh, participant in the development of the Lad Law, the Lad Act, the Lad Registration Act, the National Lad Commission Act. I was a member of that task force. And from 2003 to 2009, when we were doing the first National Lad Policy, I was one of the six rapporteurs who were writing that policy. So uh, LAD is my area, it's something that is, uh, I'm able to engage in and I would like us to be together this afternoon to, be, to see what we can do, what we can learn about community LAD. We have, as AISK, received a number of questions from you people, from the audience, from our viewers, which we are going to be answering. We have issues related to the process of, com of uh, registration of community land. We have issues related to roles of different institutions that are engaged in the uh, protection of community land rights. We also have uh, other general issues and which we are going to answer to you. Uh, in case we don't answer you adequately this afternoon, you are free to engage us even after this because we still have our lines open to receive your engagement, to receive your communication. Uh, most of the questions we have received revolve around the process, the procedure. How do, we how do we register communities? How do we register community land? Uh, and because this is a very critical aspect of the, in the Community Land Act, I will take you through the procedure for registration of community land. This is going to be our first uh, engagement, and I hope by the end of this, many of the questions that you had in mind will have been answered. Uh, we are going to relate strictly to the Community Land Act, because that is where this procedure and the process is being laid down. So. The procedure for registration of community land is a, is a three-phased process. It's not a process, it's not a one-phase process, it's a three-phase process. The first phase are what we call the preparatory processes uh, before land is registered. And because this registration is critical, we need to make adequate preparations for this process to be uh, to be successful. And what are these preparatory processes before registration? Uh, the first one is the establishment of an inventory of community land. You must know where is this land because 
you are not just going to register lard. You are registering lard that is available. You are registering lard that is in a certain area. There must be that space on the ground which you are going to be registering. So the first critical thing is to know where is this lard? Is it available for registration to the communities? And who, or who is occupying it at the moment? So we are going to the act itself in section eight uh, requires that the cabinet secretary in collaboration with the county governments and communities do an inventory of community land in all counties. So every county is supposed to submit a record, an inventory of how much land they have, what is available there, so that we have a clear picture of where the land is situated and how much of this land is available. Once this is known, then there, it will now be move, moving forward. The CS will be now gazetting a registra the, the registration units. Registration units are those areas, those units described in the Registration Act, where you, you have a registry, a full registry, and in that area, if it is a community land area, then you will also now have a registrar of community land. So in, for, in terms of preparation, we also need to now designate community land registrars. And this is the responsibility of the chief land registrar. So once we have the inventory, then you have the areas gazetted as registration units. Then you have now a designated person. Because you don't want to start the process of registration and you do not have officers in place. So we have, as a form of preparatory of, uh, processes, we have the designation of community land registrars, which is done by the chief land registrar. And this is stressed even in the community land, uh, in the land registration uh, act. Then you want to sensitize communities because Communities need to know what are our roles in this process. What is it we as a community are supposed to do? How do we engage? Who do we engage? Which institutions are we supposed to refer to when we have hot issues? So community sensitization is a very critical thing. It's a very critical activity which requires to be done before the implementation of the act. So as part of the preparatory phase, we need to sensitize communities. So once communities are sensitized, now they are able to know this is what we are supposed to do as a community. This is, these are the documents we need. This is who we are supposed to see so that we, are, we start off the process. So that is phase one. And then the first, second phase now after the preparation is the registration of community entities. Before we register LAD, we must know who is going to be holding this LAD. And that is where now the process of community registration comes in. Uh, the registration of communities uh, as entities that are legal, that can hold land and that can own land and manage it and administer the processes uh, that are required in relation to that land. And this is in section 7 and 15 of the Community Land Act. How do we register community entities? The first thing you need to prepare this community itself. Prepare it for registration as an entity. So any community claiming any interest in land must now register itself as a legal entity. And the registration of communities is done by the registrar of community land. So this community that now has felt the need to be registered will approach the registrar of community land who has now been appointed, who has been designated for that area. And because during sensitization they were already told this is the person you will see, this is the person who does what, they now know the person to go to is the community land registrar. So once they have expressed that interest, the first thing the community land registrar will do is to convene a meeting of that community. This is a very important meeting because it is the inaugural meeting that forms, starts now, begins to form the community as an entity. In this meeting, 
is where they will now lay down what do they need and what, how do they want to exist as a community. So the registrar will send out a public notice. It's a meeting that is supposed to be known by anybody who belongs to that community. So this notice will be put in a newspaper which has wide circulation. He can put it on radio, he can put it on notice within that area, he can send out any means that will be able to inform people that there is going to be a meeting of the community that lives in this area so that nobody feels left out. So th once that meeting is called, then the registrar or somebody appointed by the registrar in writing will now oversee that first meeting because out of that meeting there will be several products. One, <coughs> it is during that meeting that the community will constitute itself into a community assembly. All the adult people, they will, they are, the community assembly is supposed to be comprised of all the adults of 18 years within that community. In that commu first meeting, the community will also be electing people who are going to be now their managers for their land. They are going to be electing between 7 and 15 members of that community so that this is the team that will be now responsible for managing land, for com managing community land. So in that meeting, there are two things that are happening. One, they are going to constitute themselves into a community assembly. Two, they are going to be doing elections. And elections, the procedure is laid down uh, in the Community Land Act. When you read section seven or and section 15, those sections uh, are very clear on how elections are going to be done, who is eligible for election, and what kind of responsibilities is this community going to be having. Because for one, there must not be any discrimination within these processes of elections. Nobody should be discriminated in terms of age, gender, or sex, or, uh, or any other disability or other uh, considerations. All people must be eligible as long as you meet the requirements laid down within those sections. Then within this uh, meeting, after they have now elected themselves, another uh, activity that the community will do will be to re develop the register of community members. The elections have been done in the meeting. They have written minutes and they have said, we have elected so and so, so and so. If, for example, I'm elected together with other uh, members, we are now going to be mandated by the committee, by that assembly which we have formed, to sit down and register all the community members. That is an activity now that will be undertaken. That is the first activity that the Community Land Management Committee will be undertaking the registration of all community members because we need to know who are the members of this community, who are we going to be putting in the register, what are their ages, what is their gender, what are the relationships within that community, and how is this going, community going to be defined because the community will be defined by the content of its membership. So this membership is going to be registered, is going to be uh, recorded by the Community Land Management Committee that was elected during the meeting which was convened by the registrar. And once this uh, register of community members is ready, then the community will now decide what are we going to be calling ourselves. Because you cannot be nameless, we are going to have a name. So if it's the, the Riverside community, if it is the is the Jasho community, whatever name that we are going to be selecting. The community will agree. The name we are going to adopt is this, and this is what we shall be referred to from now on. And this name is very important, and it should be agreed upon by the members, because this is the name that will subsequently remain as their identity, all the way to the registration of their land. So this name, must be uh, agreed upon, and that is what they use for registration. And once this is agreed now, they need to develop 
their rules and regulations. And this is another activity undertaken and guided by the Community Land Management Committee. So what are the rules and regulations that they want to guide the process? How do they want to run as a community? What are the agreed norms within that community? What values shall we be at that? shall we be perpetuating as a community? You know, even the Constitution requires us under Section Article 10 to have some values, some principles and values. So these values must be seen to cascade also into the community management, in the community uh, issues. So the community will sit down and write their rules and regulations. How do we admit members into our community? How do you exit, for example? from our community. How, how do we treat the children that are going to be born? Are they going to be part of the community? How do we admit women who get married into this community? How do we, if supposing I was married in that community and I'm divorced, how do I continue to hold my membership? Am I going to be uh, to exit the community or am I going to continue to hold my membership in that community? So these rules uh, and regulations are very critical because this is going to be the the check uh, the checklist of how people should behave when they now become a community that is registered. Once all those are ready, now we are ready to submit our application for registration, not for registration of land, but registration as a community entity because we need to be an entity before we start to own land. So once all these documents are ready, one, we had minutes, remember? We had minutes that we compiled of the meeting that we, we held with the registrar. We also now, as a co community, have a list of all the members which was compiled by the community land uh, management committee as one of the activities they were spearheading. And now we have another set of documents, which is the rules and regulations of governing the community. So these are documents we are building up to be registered as a community. So once all this is ready and it is done, then we are ready to submit uh, the application to the community land registrar. So if the application, there is from the regulation, the regulations on implementation of Community Land Act, we have set forms. For every activity that is done, there is a set form in the regulations. You can always check on the back, back pages of the, of the regulations. There are set forms to be filled for each activity. There is a form that now the Community Land Management Committee fills on behalf of the community as an application to the to the land registrar for registration as a community. Then the application must contain the name of the community, the register of members, the one I ha was talking about earlier. You must have certified copies of the minutes that were written during the meeting. So the registrar, because he was present, will the, be the one certifying them. Then we must have the rules and regulations. When you also look at the regulations, uh, this, the, this, the second and third schedule of the regulations, we have a model there which we, we was given for communities to check on how, on how to develop the rules and regulations, what are the things to input. So we have that model there. And so the rules and regulations that the community has is checked against that model. And then in addition to all this now, because you remember we said we must have an inventory of community land. Community must be claiming something. It cannot be a community claiming nothing. So there must be a description of what land they are claiming. It doesn't matter what size it is. It doesn't matter how much it is. But there must be a description. We are applying to be a community so that we can own parcel that runs from River this to that old tree that is uh, that was eroded at one point, and then that lad goes to the hill. That description must be there. 
It is one of the things that the registrar will be looking for because if you only have minutes and have membership and you have regulations and there is no land you are claiming, then you cannot meet the qualifications of being a community entity. There must be some land that is being claimed. So ah, they are in, as part of the application, you must have a description of that land. You can even sit down as a, because I'm sure in the community, we have people who are landed. Even the community land management committee is able to even draw a sketch. It doesn't matter how rough it is. It will be, it will be made better in the other processes that follow. Have a sketch of the land uh, that you are, you are claiming. The, the sketch is not, it's not, uh, it's not uh, an ownership uh, description. It is just a knowledge description of what you think you own. It may not be exactly like that on the ground, but you must have the description and it is attached to the application form. Then uh, once this, all these documents are ready, the registrar will look at them, will examine whether all the requirements are, made, are met, and then the uh, community will be registered uh, as an entity. Once the community is registered as an entity, they will be given a, f a certificate of registration uh, by the registrar. The, all those forms are there in the regulations. You can look at them. Uh, they will be given a certificate of registration. Now they are a community, they are a recognized community. It is known that community Jasho exists and they have a certificate of registration. The members are 300, the members are 10,000, the members are this. They comprise maybe of so many men, so many women, and this is their description, and this is the lad they are claiming. That lad does not, it must be lad that also appeared somewhere in the inventory, because it cannot lad in, be lad in space. It must be lad that is in the inventory that we talked about earlier. So once the community have their registration, then the registrar will now enter that as an entry in one of his registers. Because the registrar is supposed to maintain a register of all the registered communities. And then once Jasho has been registered, we will now have our entry with our number there that this is another additional community that has been registered and we will now enter into the books of the registrar as a, a community. The registration being complete, now we are ready as a community to now start the other next processes. I said the, the, the registration procedure process comprised of the preparatory stages, then there is registration of community, and now the final aspect is now registration of the lad. Because all this time, LAD was not an issue. It was not occurring as, par as a, a registration item. The final, the third phase now is the registration of the LAD. As the LAD that we have said, we have attached a description. How do we now have that read, LAD registered? And that is what I want to take you through, the registration and documentation of community LAD. Uh, the first thing that is done, once now the CS received the inventory from counties, there are maybe 23 or 24 counties that have community land. So, and it is not possible to work on all the counties together. So. What the CS will do once the inventory is received, they will look at the, the land available and based on the requests of communities because registration of community land is a community driven activity. It's not a top down activity, it's a community driven activity. And the people must express interest to, uh, to register their land. So once that interest has been expressed, what the CS will do is to gazette an adjudication program. Take for example, uh, this community, Jasho, is in that area of Isiolo somewhere. 
and they have already expressed their interest that we want to have our land registered. So what the CS will do is to gazette an adjudication program, which now will be information to people that we have intentions to move into this area to do A, B, C, D, to adjudicate land being claimed by community, this, that, and that. And this information must be very clear in the Gazette notice because you are informing people that you are moving into the area. Maybe on that people, on that land where you want to move in, there are people who are not who were not even registered as members of that community. They didn't even know that the community has been registered, but they have an interest in that land. There may be people who belong to that community and they live very far. So they must get this information that our land, our community land in this area is being uh, adjudicated and we need to be there because we have an interest in that land. Maybe we have interests that are not even part of the community, but it is their interests are on that land. So this Gazette notice will be able to inform everybody that has an interest in that land that there's a, a process that is going to be undertaken, there's an adjudication process that is going to be an, uh, taken in that area so that this land is registered. When you talk of the adjudication program in this sense, we are not talking about the same adjudication that is undertaken under CAP 284, that is the Land Adjudication Act. No, we are talking about a recording of interests, of rights and interests of a community together. Not the way we do currently as adjudication, where we do recording of rights and interests of individuals. We are not individualizing community land. We are only uh, what marking their marking their interests. We are only appreciating. We are only recognizing the interests they have, and then being able to adjudicate it from other areas, to alienate it from other areas, from other lands, because this one is specific to this community. We are removing it from the, the whole to, be, to the lower aspect of community now. So we are going to put up that notice so that people know that there is that program, uh, so that we don't confuse it with the current adjudication that is ongoing. Adjudication is still ongoing, yes, because there were still very many uh, sections that had not been completed and the process had already started and so that one has to continue. So the Gazette of an adjudication program in this case is only related to that portion of community land, that area where the CS wants to start adjudicating land for community registration. Once that is done, then the CS will also appoint and gazette adjudication officers. In every adjudication area for community land, there must be an adjudication person who is gazetted and who will now lead a team. There will be a team. It is not a one-person activity. It will be a team comprised of adjudication persons, planners, surveyors, and representatives of the community because the community must be able to show this is our boundaries. You must be able to walk the boundaries with the community. Because if you are sent there, you don't know what that sketch referred to. They will be the ones showing you this is what we, we are claiming. We are claiming this land from here to that to that. So they must be part of that adjudication team because they have the knowledge of their boundaries. They have the knowledge of, their, of the land which they are claiming. And it is also important during that, which, which is another process, to also know, to have also inform the adjacent communities. That is why this Gazette notice is important. Because the Gazette notice has described the land which will be adjudicated, which means if we are the neighboring communities, now we also have an interest because we do not know and we do not want the boundary to be put where it is not supposed to be. So as an adjacent community, we also have an interest in this land. So through the Gazette notice, we'll be able to get that information and we'll be able also to be there as participants so that 
we have boundaries that have no dispute. We know there are very many disputes related to boundaries, but if communities that are adjacent to one another are able to participate in that adjudication program, they are able to negotiate right from the beginning that yes, your boundary is here, your boundary is not here. Maybe this river moved, and then the community is starting to claim land based on the new boundary, that the river, I mean, the new course of the river, but it is well known that this river moved 15 years ago. So the boundary does not now begin to change because the river moved. So those are things that are important that during the adjudication process. Uh, the officers are appointed and now once they are appointed the team is ready. We have planners, we have surveyors, we have the community. Once the team is put in place it is ready to hit the ground and the next step now will be to survey that land the claimed land. Uh, the land that the community is claiming on the ground, it will be surveyed and the survey uh, cadastral maps will be prepared. The surveyors on the ground, the planners on the ground, adjudication on the ground. The adjudication person will be helping the team to record the rights and interests of these people and all those people who are claiming that land. The planner in the team will be helping this community to tell them this, the, the uses of this land, the relationships between uses in this land, uh, this and that. You have schools maybe in that community. You'd like to establish certain settlement areas. You'd be wanting to establish certain grazing areas. You'll want to set aside areas on that land which you can lease out to other people. So the planner in that team will be helping the community, even with these relationships. Even as they continue the process of registration, they will be having something in mind that in the final run, this is what, how we, are going, we can use this land. Maybe it's already in use, but the relationships between the uses within that land at the moment were not guided by any planning, uh, uh, planning intentions. So the planner will be assisting while the surveyor now will be putting the actual actual uh, measurements on the land. The measurements related to to their area, the measurements related to their boundaries, you'll be recording the actual uh, the coordinates and all those other things related to surveying. What, where is this land? What is the spatial uh, position of this land? on the ground. So the surveyor, that's why the surveyor is there, so that now once all this information is put together, then they will sit down and the cadastral maps will be drawn, they will be ready, they will, be, they will go through the same process that all other maps go. There are no exemptions that because it is community land, no. All the necessary approvals for those maps to be able to be registered will be done. And once all that is ready, now this package, the maps plus all the other documents that are related will now be submitted to the community land registrar for registration. Uh, remember, there are other documents that the registrar already have which are related to the community. He has the names, the membership, who are the committee members and all that. So this package will now be registered is what the registrar will be receiving from the team, the adjudication team. And then the registrar will register, will open a community land register, and then will issue a certificate of lease or a certificate of title to the community. There is a prescribed form, section eight of the Land Registration Act, and the regulations on LAD Act in section uh, regulation 14.2 describes the kind of registration that the community will receive and that is what they will get as now the document for ownership of that LAD. Then once that is done, the, the, the registration process is complete and then the register will be maintained by the registrar. The registrar in each registration unit will maintain a community land register which will be showing the cadastral maps of the community land. 
court maps were drawn and uh, the, the approved maps, then the name of the registered community, the registered members, then you have what use is that land designated for, and that is why I was saying earlier we needed a planner because the various uses that that land is put to must be described uh, in the registration documents, and if there are any other details that registrar would want in relation to this land, he also calls for that, and now becomes part of his uh, uh, register of community land. One thing we need to note uh, here is that there are many people who will come to try and register this land, but the registrar cannot register any instrument purporting to dispose of the rights of a community uh, interests in land. So if the registration documents have not met the, uh, the requirements of the Community Land Act, then the registrar cannot uh, register that because it will be disposing, dispossessing community of the, ra of the land that they rightly own. Then any transaction on community land must be noted in the register. Uh, even after registration, the community does not add the issues related to that land in terms of administration don't add there. There will be day-to-day -day happenings, there will be rentals on that land, there will be changes in that land. All those must be noted by in the register. That is why a community has its own register. Then whatever happens to that land, if there is an acre that was rented to me to plant some trees, then it will be, there is a document the community will give me and that is what will be noted in the register of the, in the registrar's register. If there is a, an investor who has come in and requested for five acres to construct uh, a factory because there are some uh, good muggles coming from that area and they have constructed a factory, that, that allocation that the community that has given to an investor must be noted in the register. Why are we doing this? Because the community in the registrar's uh, records, the community land may be 50 acres, but on the ground the community has given out this land to p different people such that what is remaining is only five acres. So it is important that all changes in community land are recorded in the registrar, in the registrar's records. They are noted so that they are able to, to, be, to be followed at any one point. And we are able to monitor the, the lad, how much is existing, how much lad we have at any one point. And one the other thing we need to note is that for group ranches, they must first convert into communities before they are registered. Remember, the Constitution converted group ranch lad into community lad. And that is lad which was already registered. Maybe they were already registered and they have a registration document. And they want to convert to a community lad. They must convert first to a community, be registered uh, as a community because initially they were registered at ACAP 287, which is the group lad representatives, uh, which is the lad group representatives act. And then now that is repealed and they have to convert themselves into a community so that must be converted they must return that certificate that they had of title that they had before so that now it is con uh, converted it is cancelled and they get other documents a fresh registration document for their land so in terms of process of registration of community land that is how we are supposed, that is the process that we, you are going to go through. I said in the beginning it is a three-phased uh, activity, the preparatory activities that are undertaken by, by, by the stakeholders, other people who have different roles. We have the phase for registration of community as an entity, and then the last one is the registration of land itself. As a, as a resource for that community. So once that process is understood, then the rest of the questions are easy because you'll be asking how difficult it is, somebody has asked how difficult it is, how to 
to register community land. But the most important thing is to understand that process. Once you have understood that process as a community and what is your role, your role in that process, where do you enter, where do you go out to seek uh, support from a professional, where do you converge again, and what documents do you require. Once that is properly understood, then I'm sure our communities will be able to now start moving out to register themselves because we are, we are behind. We have not yet seen that vibrant response to the Community Land Act to go out there and register the land. The agitation for the Community Land Act was, was, uh, was there. It could be felt, it could be seen. But the response in terms of the activities to be done by communities has not yet uh, reached that level where we see action and that is what we need to do because the process is easy. It's just like they have explained. And I think that is understood. Uh, once we have understood that process, then <coughs> uh, somebody asked, <coughs> excuse me, somebody asked, do we have any challenges in implementing the Community Land Act? What are the challenges that we we are facing in terms of implementation of the Community Land Act. And one thing we need to note is that the implementation of the Community Land Act was the mandate or is the mandate of the Ministry of Lands and Fiscal and Fiscal Planning. Then this is supposed to be done, of course, not alone, but in collaboration with the county governments and other stakeholders. County governments are very critical in the implementation of the Community Land Act. Why is this? Because according to the Constitution, the com county governments are the trustees of all unregistered community land. They hold that the bulk of the land on behalf of the resident communities. So if this process has to take off, then the county governments must come in and play their roles in the implementation of this act because the Minister of Lands alone cannot because this is a collaborative effort. And I said, even in the matter of putting the inventory together, it is a collaborative effort, which means you cannot implement this act unless the county governments, the national government and stakeholders come together and do this work. Uh, from sources in the ministry, they have made some progress and we note the progress. And uh, when we talked to, to the people uh, who are responsible for implementing of this act, they, they got information that they have made some good progress. Because one, uh, they already have a unit. They have a, a unit they have formed to implement the Community Land Act. Of course, it is a bit late because from 2016 uh, to 2019, when that process began, we have lost some time. But if we are able to catch up with this, then we will see the implementation and uh, moving forward. One, they have formed a unit to coordinate the implementation of this act with various stakeholders. And they also this unit is also supposed to coordinate or sensitization activities. Remember we said as part of the preparatory activities for implementation, there must be sensitization of communities because you can't tell me to go register my lad and I don't know how or where to start. So there is this unit which is also supposed to coordinate sensitization. Another thing they have done is to call for county governments to submit the records of community lad in their respective counties for the compilation of the inventory of community land. And this is where the elephant in the house is. I think people don't want to disclose what they have. Because from what they tell me, the counties have not given out this information. People still don't want to be known. We have 10 acres, we have 20, we have thousands of community land, of unregistered community land. And if we have said counties are, are the custodians of unregistered community land. 
we don't have an inventory yet on community land. We still don't know where this land is and why, because the Ministry of Lands requested community uh, counties as the custodians of this land to give information on what is in their areas. And up to date, I'm told less than nine or less have done that. There are very, very few who have committed themselves to say, this is what we have as community land, this is what we have as a county. So what is happening is that you cannot have an inventory of community land, and by that extension, you cannot gazette an adjudication program. Communities cannot register themselves, and this now delays the implementation of this act. It's actually one of the challenges. So they have already called for that. And remember, in the regulations, I, when you read the regulations, you, the CS is mandated that if the counties do not respond within a certain period, I think it's about a year or so, if they still don't respond, you can, the CS can go ahead and work with communities directly to get out what land is there in the counties. I think the CS has been kind, does not want to, to go directly to the communities because it is not even right. The counties are the ones who are supposed to respond and let's have this information known so that a proper uh, registration process for communities and their land can begin. So that is, they have done that. And then the other thing the ministry has done, they have appointed registrars for com of community land. The re officers are ready to start implementing, to start convening meetings. But then you cannot convene when you have no inventory. You cannot convene a community for land that is not known, even by sketch. So you see everything revolves around an inventory. They have also reviewed the status of group ranches to facilitate conversion into community land. This is a process that was supposed to have been undertaken by the Department of Land Adjudication. They have already started that. So that now, this can also now start converting. And then one other thing they have done through the unit is to sensitize stakeholders. They have sensitized even members of parliament, they have sensitized governors and their officers, they have sensitized uh, MCAs, members of county assemblies, and staff of the Ministry of Lands. And I remember even ISK professional groups have also been sensitized. I remember there was a sensitization at Stanley for all professional groups. So we can say that sensitization has been done and they have also sensitized community leaders. What has not really been done uh, in the f is the community level sensitization. But you see, the community level sensitization, once you have now taken community leaders, the expectation is that this group, this team, will also go and sensitize the members of the communities. And this is what has not happened. And because of also that issue of not knowing where community land is, they are all tied together. So this sensitization has not happened, but all the necessary leadership in the counties has been sensitized. They have been sensitized, they have been taken through the Community Land Act, they have been taken through the, the regulations, they have been taken through the program that the ministry has done of implementation and what the ministry needs to do. So what remains to be done now is starting mobilizing the, uh, the communities to start the process of registration. And some of the challenges, like I've mentioned as I was talking earlier, was that there were delays in the funding, and that is why it took almost three years to begin uh, implementation of the act. Then there is another fee, uh, challenge. I think there is fear of the, there is some perceived fear of the unknown effects of registering community land. And I think that is what is holding many people behind, holding many people back, including the counties. I think that even the counties have this fear. 
once we release this land to be registered, you see, once the counties release land to communities for registration, they cease to have any interest in that land. They cease their interest, the trusteeship over that land ceases. Immediately the land is registered. So the land moves to, from county, to, it has its owners. It's just like you own your plot in town, in an urban area. The level of ownership is the same. Which means, once you have your plot, you don't allow anybody to come in any time. So once the community has its land registered, it is their land. Anything happening on that land uh, must be now in consultation with the community. And I think this is where the issue is coming in. This fear, this perceived fear of the unknown effects of, the, of registering land as community land is one of the challenges. And that is one of the things that is holding us back even in developing the inventory. So if we can deal with this fear, and the fear can be dealt with through sensitization, what are the good aspects of this community land registration? What are the opportunities it's going to create? Because those are the things we should be looking at mostly. Unfortunately, many of us have looked at what will happen, the bad things that will happen when we register community land, rather than looking at what are those very good things that door, which doors will open once we have those registration titles. Once that land is secure, is securely protected and documented, what are the good things? So if we can deal with that fear, then the implementation of this act will be easier. And then we, we like I mentioned earlier, without, I will not dwell on that again, the issue, the reluctance among county governments to disclose the amount of and status of community land in their counties. Because although I said that request was made, they have not done that. And so it is not possible to move forward. And then there is the issue I mentioned earlier, inadequate sensitization at community level by leaders who are sensitized. They need to cascade this knowledge down so that they are their people know. But you see, many times ignorance, we can take advantage of ignorance. And there are areas where leaders will not want people to know too much. You know when you know too much, you ask too many questions. So that is also preventing communities from moving forward. So we need to sensitize our communities. We need to continuously sensitize the leaders. And I'm sure even the ISK, there are so those programs we always organize. This is part of the sensitization we are talking about because information is power. And when people have information, they are able to move from point A to point B because you are informed. Then we have uh, also process adjudication uh, uh, processes that are still ongoing. We had very many adjudication sections which were not complete and which are running concurrently with the implementation of the Community Land Act. Sometimes that could also be and have an effect on the ongoing uh, implementation of the Community Land Act because the same people who are supposed to be adjudicating uh, community land are in, uh, involved elsewhere in finalization of those works. But I'm sure once this is sorted out, especially the issue of inventory, once that is sorted out, once we have responses from counties that this is the land that is available on the ground, it is not difficult for the ministry to organize itself. I'm not speaking on their behalf, but my assumption is it is not difficult for the ministry to organize itself to implement the two programs concurrently, adjudication of uh, community land and finalization of the ongoing adjudication programs. So in terms of the challenges that uh, we are facing in implementation of uh, community land, that is where we start. We need to resolve our fears and look at community land uh, registration as a positive thing for this country because most of our land is in the community land areas. Those are the areas we are moving to. We would like our communities in those areas to benefit from ownership of that land. If there are, <coughs> there are acquisitions to be made, if there are expansion programs, development programs, infrastructural programs going on, 
we need our communities to benefit from compass adequate compensation because when you have registered blood you have a negotiating power you have a power of negotiation as opposed to when your lad is owned by amorphous amorphous has an amorphous ownership so this is an important thing we need to overcome our fears of the consequences and effects of registration of community land, we need to look at it as a positive thing for our communities. Counties need to look at it as a positive thing for the communities. In any case, when we are devolved, it means developing the people in that county. You cannot continue to hold back registration of land and still purport to be developing that county. It, they never work. We need to open up, we need to register land, we need to have people know the extent of their land. Let have, let's have the country mapped out and surveyed and land registered. And most of the unregistered land is still in community lands. So if we do not have an inventory so that we know how much it is, then we are not able to register that land. So those are the challenges that are being faced right now in terms of implementation of the community that act. Uh, I want to, to continue because there are other questions. There, there was a related question on that, that is it easy to, to, is it easy to register lad? It is easy to register lad, but with the hurdles we are facing, then uh, that is what brings the problems. And I think communities that are asking that are asking that because they think the it's the process that is difficult because they are not registered. But it is not the process that is difficult. It is because we don't have an inventory. It's because your counties have not responded. So if that is now resolved, then we are able to move forward. Uh, there is another question which was looking at the act and wondering whether we have ways or strategies of guarding against intra-community injustice and discrimination and also discrimination against uh, vulnerable groups like women and children. Uh, does the Community Land Act have any safeguards for that? And uh, I want to say here that uh, the Community Land Act is very clear on the need for equity and justice to all members of the community and it has enough safeguards. It has adequate safeguards to ensure access, use and ownership of community land so that everybody who is a member of a community feels guarded, feels protected. Uh, in the different sections of this uh, act, which I encourage all of you to read. It's a very small act, and I encourage all of us to read it. In those different sections, we have upheld, we have, the act has upheld the sentiments of Article 40 of the Constitution, which gives every person the right to own land, and of course protects that land from being taken away from you without any compensation. So in this act, act also, those safeguards are there because it is recognized that even as a community, you have equal rights and you are, your ownership is not subordinate to private ownership. It is not subordinate to ownership derived from public land. It is ownership and it has equal rights. So there are safeguards in that, um, in that, in the act. When you look at section 30, it is very detailed of the act. It detailed the principles for non-discrimination of membership on the basis of any ground, not on gender grounds, not on age, not on ethnicity, not on religion, not on culture, and not on any maybe ethnic or social origin or any other form of discrimination you might think of. So when you go through section 30, it is very, very clear. I don't know whether to read that for you, but I don't want to go through it all. But it says very, very clearly that there should not be any discrimination. Let me, let's just look at that. It says, it is actually the subheading of section 30 of the act is non-discrimination. It says, 
every member of the community has the right to equal benefit from community land. And it goes on uh, to say women, youth, minority persons with the disabilities and marginalized groups have the right to equal treatment in all dealings in community land. So I would encourage you to read it to the end because it has many, uh, many sections. So when we talk about discrimination, it is there is proper safeguard in that section and even in many other sections. You remember discrimination can even start from registration of the community because that is the first point where uh, a marginalized person, a woman, a youth or any other person, maybe um, not from that area, that is the beginning of discrimination. When the community list, the community members list is being compiled. That is where discrimination starts from. But the act says nobody should be discriminated because if you have been living on that land as part of that community, you have benefited, you have made your livelihood from that. Your children went to school because you have been growing uh, maize or you have been growing crops. Excuse me, you have your beehives there and that's where you have been getting your livelihood from or that is where you have been uh, grazing. You have 10 bulls, you graze there, you sell, your children go to school. So if that is you have, what you have been doing in that land, you should never be discriminated. So from the membership, that is where discrimination begins. But it is very clear that even under Section 15 of the Act, nobody should be discriminated people, the members of that community are all people who are adults and those are the people, it does not say they are men of 18 years of who are adults, it does not say they should be uh, people of the, this faith who are, no, it says adults and an adult can be an adult woman, an adult man, an adult disabled person, an adult uh, people of this faith an adult person of this ethnic background. So that discrimination is safeguarded. The act safeguards against any form of discrimination. Uh, even in the election of committee members, the community lad management committee, it is very clear that there should be very strict adherence to the two thirds gender rule so that nobody feels uh, discriminated and it even provides that there should be youth, there should be persons with disabilities represented in that committee. So the, the act clearly safeguards against any form of injustices, any form of discrimination. And in terms of those internal, internal conflicts, internal uh, discrimination, they are supposed to be to be eliminated through their rules and regulations. Remember, we said every community must sit down together and decide we'll be running our community lad like A, B, C, D. These are the norms, these are the values, these are the principles we need to uphold in, this, uh, in running this community. So when all those put together with the constitution, with the act, with the regulations, all that put together, it gives enough safeguards against discrimination of people in the community from any form of um, any form of discrimination based on any form of uh, fact. So we need not fear. And that's why I say, let's look at the opportunities this act is creating, not the fears. We see some questions we ask because of the same fear I talked about. The fear, the fear. If we bring in so and so as part of this community, if so and so has been living there and then we register the him as part of that community, what will happen? See, Mishawe Atatu. So that's why we are saying the act is for all. The act has no discrimination and the, in the procedure, in the procedures of recognizing people. For example, even those people who have been living on that land, it gives a procedure whether you are from that area or not or how you, are, you came to live in that. It gives a procedure of how do you recognize those rights and interests. 
how do we recognize the rights and interests of people who have been living in an area who are, I came in and I was given land because uh, my grandfather was a, was a friend to my schoolmates, a grandfather from another area. And we were given a portion of land there because the area was good for, for growing certain things. And we have lived there, we have lived over the years. So the grandfathers went, we were left there, and we have continued to live there. The Act gives you means of recognizing such rights. It tells us how do we now recognize these uh, customary rights of occupancy. How do we, they were given through customary ways. How do we recognize them? So the Act is very clear on how to do that. In section 14, when you go through that, you will get all that information on that. Now, the, let's look at something I mentioned earlier. <coughs> uh, somebody asked us, what is the role of a registrar in community land protection? Uh, they said county land registrar in community land protection. But uh, I want to look at it as the role of the, a registrar because county is based on where it is, is because you have been posted there in the county, but you must maybe doubling up as also the registrar of community land because there is the, the community land in that area, and that is what has happened in many areas. So what are our roles in terms of uh, protection of community land? Uh, what we know is that in every registration unit, it, there is required to be a registrar. And somebody, and a registrar also, designated to register community land. Because it is assumed that this, pass, this land will begin to now, because people have been sensitized, they will begin to, to respond and want to be registered. So what will be the role of this registrar in that land? One, it will be to initiate the process for registration of community entities. Remember we said the community must be registered. And we said in the process of registration of communities, the first thing that happens is convening of a meeting, which is done by the registrar or a person designated in writing by the registrar to represent the registrar. So the first thing first role that they play is to initiate the process for registration of community entities. So the registrar convenes the first meeting of the community and in this meeting the registrar must also oversee the elections. Is the returning officer of the elections of the community land management committee. Because it is in this meeting that you have convened as a registrar where the elections are done. And the elections are the opening of activities for this community. It is the opening of the, of the registration of community because it is after the elections when we have now a group of people who we task to compile the list of community members, who we task to compile the rules and regulations of this community. So the registrar is a very critical person in this area because unless you convene this meeting, the registration process cannot begin. So the, registrar ma the registrars who are in the areas that are community land areas, they must now begin to, to take up their role. Because this is, I think, maybe there has not been a lot of, uh, of maybe, I don't want to say sensitization. Sensitization has been done. But I think it has not come up out we are, maybe registrars are used to registering land, but not mobilization of people, of communities. So maybe this is now a change in what we have been doing, that we are now also tasked to mobilize communities. If you are in areas that are community land areas, we are also tasked to mobilize communities to come for registration, to come, begin to come for registration as entities. So that is one of the roles they are supposed to play. Initiate the process by convening a meeting and overseeing the election of the community land management committee. The other task they have is registration of communities. 
uh, they are responsible for registering communities as entities and this is c communities that have met the requirements. Remember we said the community must have a register of membership. We said they must have um, a sketch of the land they are claiming. We said they must have uh, rules and regulations. They must have minutes of the meeting you as a registrar convened. So they are responsible for registration of communities. And in addition to that, they should maintain the register of those communities that they have registered. So they, in addition to registration, they are also maintaining a register of communities, the register of registered community entities in the area. Because we would like to know in uh, Maralal how many community how many communities have registered, for example? You go to the register, it is the form, the format of uh, maintaining this register is in the regulations that uh, are, are, uh, have been provided, the regulations 2017 on the implementation of community land. The format for maintaining that register has been given there. They, you are supposed to, what details you are supposed to capture. So. That register must be maintained and is the role of the registrar and is, it must be a very clear register because some communities will say, will keep coming and say, Kwanza, this member here, I don't even know how they entered this register. I don't even know how they were entered into this register. But you see, you have the record and they are the ones who compiled that register. So you are only a custodian. So the, it's the role of it's the role of the registrar to maintain that record. Then we have also the role of registering the interest in community land. So just like they register other lads, private lad, lad from public uh, lad category, once the lad is surveyed, once community lad is surveyed and is complete, the maps are complete, then the registrar is the one who is supposed to register that and also maintain community lad register. So like you remember I said, that register is necessary because any changes in the community lad must be noted. So the registrar is the custodian of that uh, lad, lad register. And then he's also responsible for winding up of group representatives. The registrar, once you get the report from adjudication that these are the group branches in your area, then he's supposed to now inform the, the group representatives to now come and start the process of conversion and also call them, remind them to bring back the documents they were registered with, the lad was registered with, so that they can now be cancelled and new ones issued. So generally those are the roles of the registrar in the process of protection of community land. Uh, somebody asked what is the state of community land in Kenya? today and I I don't want to dwell so much on that because for one we all know that article 63 of the constitution 223 brought in a lot of lad under the ambit of community lad and the registration of those lads some of those were the unregistered community lads and those are the majority of lads because they are the lads that are were previously held as trust lads under the county councils which are now defunct and that is the land most of the land in many areas is they are unregistered so what is happening today is that that land is still under county governments because it's not yet been brought in and so the land the status of that land must is what can only be accounted for by the county governments and that's why we want them to respond to the issue of the the inventory so that we know where that lad is where that what is happening on that lad one thing is that that the constitution has said is that community lad should not be disposed of or otherwise used except in terms of legislation uh, that will now be developed by parliament and the legislation we are talking about is the community lad act so if anybody is dealing with community lad today without reference to the community lad act without following the the laid down uh 
procedures in the Community Land Act, in the regulations, then that is an anomaly because it is termed as an illegal allocation. Why? Because it is very clear in the Constitution that you cannot dispose of this land unless in, in accordance with the act that will be developed by Parliament and Parliament was mandated to do that and they already have given us an act so it is now a question of implementing uh, that act. And the status also is that many communities are yet to embrace the realities of the Community Land Act, not only communities, even leadership. Even our leaders in counties at a local level, they have many people have not yet embraced the realities of the Community Land Act and the opportunities it provides for communities to own, register, and do business with the land. Because you can do a lot of business with land rights. You can sell, you can rent, you can exchange. And all that can be done if land is registered. So this is what we have not embraced in a community land so that we can we can continue to take advantage of the act and then uh, the county governments the reality is that county governments continue to hold unregistered community land in trust for the communities so and some group ranches have not yet started converting in fact there is only one group ranch which has converted in Laikipia and they have been registered now as a community and they have been given new documents. So it is possible, this process is possible and the issue is let's take advantage of this act. Let's take advantages of the opportunities created by this act so that our communities, our people on the ground are able to benefit and the process is as easy as I explained earlier. Um, Somebody asked, and I think this is a pro professional who asked, has the Ministry of Lads developed an information system with the data sets on community lad? I asked the Ministry of Lads about that question because they are a better place to answer that. And the information they gave me is that they still don't know where the community lad is because they don't have an inventory. It has not their response. You see, it's all going back to the counties that they don't know where the community land is. So it is not possible for them to adjudicate, to even develop any system based on the community land. Because for any uh, information system, the land must also be surveyed so that you, ha you know for sure the, sp the, the spatial spread of that land on the ground. So without this information, they are not able to, uh, able to develop any land information system. Even they are not able to capture that in what they are working on now as a land information system. That is why it is actually urgent for us to now get the inventory, know where all this land is, have it surveyed, so that it becomes part and parcel of our information system, which is going to be uh, formal. Then uh, somebody has asked, after a lad is registered as a community lad, can individual households of the community proceed to acquire individual titles? One thing we need to note is that once lad is registered as community lad, it already has a title. It is already titled, that lad, and it is not titled to the individual, it is titled to the entire community. The community that we registered, the community that we are members of. So we are part and parcel of that community who own that land. So the only way an individual now can come in to have an individual title to that land is if the community now converts that land through an agreement uh, uh, approval of two thirds of majority of the assembly to convert that land to private land. So that now you as an individual can now own it. So if two thirds, which you can imagine getting two thirds of a community to agree to give land to Priscilla can be a very difficult thing. So if the community agrees now, they can convert that land and then through transfer, I can now have uh, a portion of that land. 
the normal transfer process will now apply so that I can now register. But as individuals within that, then the, the lad already has titles. You can also get, uh, the lad can also get another title through transmission and through, uh, and through compulsory acquisition. Compulsory acquisition, of course, it will go to for the purpose for which it is being taken. And to be titled, if it is Kenya roads, it will go to roads. If it is going to establish uh, multi-purpose, maybe fish project for the nation, for the nation, it will go to that and to be titled to that. But registering it as community, as individuals, is a bit difficult. I, there are different sections of the act. If you go through the act, if you go through the regulation, you will see how serious community land is taken. And you know, the constitution sub, uh, pra, so envisaged a situation that all three categories of land will continue to exist alongside one another, the public land, private land, community land. So killing community land has been made difficult because when you kill that category by privatization, by individualization, then it means you are killing, you are silently changing the categories done in, made in the constitution, which means, and that is why the Community Land Act made it difficult to, to have individuals register land. But it does not mean that you cannot own land in the community land. There are, there are sections in that which you, which shows which tells you how do you as an individual family own land and once you have now gone through the section 14 of the act then tells you how do you go about having that portion which you have been using consistently from a long time ago how does it become yours it will be yours yes you'll be given not a title but what we call a certificate of customary occupation. That one is as good as a title to yourself because you are going to be given that but you are not going to get a title. The title is one for the whole community but you as an individual family, as an individual, as an organization, you get a certificate of, uh, of customary occupation because the community is going to be recognizing your claim on that lad is going to be recognizing that yes this person has been living here this person has even buried their ancestors here this person has been your children have been inheriting that same lad although you have had no documents for it so the community will now give you uh, a certificate of customary occupation for that lad so uh, there are many issues, there are many questions I'm sure we might have that we are having in our minds that we would like answered in relation to community land. And the answers, most of the answers are in the Act. If you don't get that answer in the Act, it is in the regulation, especially matters related to procedure and, and processes, step by step doing is in the regulations. You can get that there. Other aspects are also entwined in the constitution because the constitution being the, the supreme law, all these are acts, other acts must be aligned to that. And that is what the Community Land Act has tried to do. I will encourage you to continue reading that act. Read it first as a story, then read it again. Pick out what you understand, pick out what you don't understand, ask somebody, we in ISK, are always there to answer your questions. These sessions are there every Friday from 2 to 4. Uh, we'll be answering your questions. If there are questions which have not been answered today, we still have another opportunity. You still have our number. You can still contact us again on WhatsApp on 0724 You can reach us on WhatsApp. You can do an email to us at info at isk.or.ke. You can also visit us at, uh, in our offices at Reinsurance Plaza, 10th floor. Our, our doors are always open. You can drop your question there or you can 
use any means. You can even drop our question to our Minister of uh, Lads office. They can always forward the question to us if they are not going to answer you. But information is there, information is out there. You can always uh, get that information and be part of the, of the knowledge uh, group that is going to move this act forward. Let us all join together and implement this act. Every one of us has a role to play, and uh, thank you very much. We'll be convening together, <coughs> we'll be meeting together in another forum like this. Thank you.